This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them, and then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to start my homily by referring back to the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And the vision that Daniel is having, a surging stream of fire, and then one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. And when he reached the ancient one, the one like the son of man received dominion, glory, kingship, all peoples, nations, and languages. His dominion is everlasting, and it shall not be taken away. That reading from the book of Daniel, written hundreds of years before Jesus came on the scene, is fulfilled in the gospel today. Jesus is preaching, and don't forget, this is the gospel of Matthew, and Matthew always presents Jesus as a teacher. And this is a teaching and a theophany at the same time. A theophany is a revelation of God. So he brings his apostles, Peter, James, and John, to the mountainside, and the theophany, the, the presence of God, infuses Jesus. And you hear from the scriptures, his clothes and his face become white as light. The presence of God. And then we have the revelation that he is the Son of Man. He is the one who has dominion and power and glory. Now, it's important sometimes to mention and respectfully focus on the dominion of Christ, the, the, the power of Christ, his role as the Son of Man, his role as the one who can approach God himself. And of course, being God, he not only approaches the throne of, throne of God, but he sits equally at that throne. We, we don't think of Jesus in these days, so much as one of glory and power, we, we prefer, I think, to have Jesus one of us, which is appropriate. He came to earth, he walked the earth, he loved the poor, he loved the sinner, he asks us to follow him and, and respect each other. But once in a while we have to leap to the div divine nature of Jesus. And this is one of those days, the Feast of the Transfiguration, in which we, we respect and focus on his divinity. The first memory of this day that I have goes back to Cefalu, which is a beautiful town in Sicily. I was there with John in the 80s, and we went swimming. And beautiful water, beautiful atmosphere, beautiful beach. And as I look up, there is the cathedral of Cefalu. And I said, what is that? I hadn't yet gotten my directions down and, and my maps out. And John said, well, that's the Cathedral of Cefalu. We'll go in there later. Oh, I look for, it was so beautiful and majestic the way it stood out there. 
But it was simple. Architecture was simple. It was like a what we call Norman Gothic. Okay. Later on that day, we were all dressed and we decided to go to the cathedral. Well, what was outside was beautiful. What was inside was awesome. The mosaics, and I think the cathedral is dedicated to the, arch the, the uh, patronage of King Roger. The, the mosaics from floor to ceiling, unbelievable. And Christ in glory, the Pantocrator, at the, at the apse of the church over the altar, was so awesome, I've never forgotten that face. I've never forgotten that experience. And I associate that experience of seeing the church and seeing the, the Pantocrator, Jesus Christ in glory, with the transfiguration, because that's the first day the two connected in me, personally. It's not a kind of memorable thing that all of us have. It's those of us who have different associations with Christ are blessed to have. So I think back at that, and I think of that beautiful image of Christ, the blessing one, but he's called the Pantocrator, the judge of heaven and earth. Pantocrator, the judge of all things. And again, today we focus on that, his divine role. We come to church, and we, we put our prayers before Christ, and we trust him. But to know that we have the ability, just like Peter, James, and John, we have the ability to be in his presence. And in his naivete, it's beautiful the way Peter says, we have to build three tents, one for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses. I mean, the guy was out of his mind. He didn't know what was going on. And he knew Elijah, the ancestry of Jesus in his family tree, and, and one of the great prophets of the past, same with Moses. Maybe they had symbols that associated them with their role. And Peter's figures, I see them, might as well set up hospitality for them. And of course, you know, it's almost like Matthew, tongue-in-cheek, says, come on, Peter, you're being silly. These are holy men that are divine. They're not human anymore. They're with God. And they came to consult with the Son of God. And that's what they were doing. Don't forget, it's Matthew's gospel, and the teaching Matthew comes out even in the transfiguration. And who is Elijah and who is Moses? Well, Elijah is the, the prophet that's always associated with the Holy of Holies, the temple. And the story is that when the final temple was destroyed, people had a vision of Elijah on a fiery chart leaving. And he wound up being with the people through their faith. That is why the hope of the Passover meal, which is called the Seder every year, the hope is that the people of throughout the world who are Jews, who are celebrating the Seder, will next year celebrate it in the Holy Land, the home of their ancestor, the home of the temple. And a part of the Seder ceremony, someone opens the door for Elijah. And part of the ceremony, they leave it a table set and a place setting and a cup for Elijah. So a cup at the, at the meal of the Seder, which is a Passover meal for Elijah, is always there. Some theologians think that at Jesus' Last Supper, that's the cup he took. It was reserved for Elijah. Nobody would drink from it. But that's the cup he took and said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. So you, you, you see all the connections coming out when Jesus, the Holy of Holies himself. So Elijah appears to Jesus, not in the temple, he appears to Jesus as a reminder that the, this is the Messiah. This is the one that I was announcing. This is the one I've been preparing for. And of course, the vision continues with Moses. Moses is the lawgiver. Moses gives us the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. And, of course, he's the person who brings the people of Israel out of bondage. He is paying respects to Jesus, who brings us out of bondage. So we have the lawgiver and the Messiah summated, sum, in a summary form in the transfiguration. And Jesus is our lawgiver, our Messiah, and our brother. Today we commemorate him in our lives. And take a moment today just to speak to Jesus in your own hearts. Thanking him for the faith with which we have. 
and thank him for the faith that we need each day to continue our lives here on earth. And maybe our lives will assist one person to be transfigured into a more loving experience for ourselves and for them. And that the law of love in our hearts runs our lives. Happy Feast of the Transfiguration.